rising, eyes are turning to you. Return to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. It's in your presence all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. You're worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna to come out your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. It's in your presence all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. You're worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna. To come out your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna. Hosanna. God who saves us, you're worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, so come out your way among us, you welcome you here, Lord Jesus. online church service this morning, Sunday the 21st of June, brought to you by St Andrew's Horton the Skern. Whether you're someone who's been with us for the whole of lockdown and sharing and joining in these online services, or whether you're a newcomer this morning, you're welcome and it's great to be able to join together to celebrate and share as God's family in this service online. We're going to be starting a new theme for all of our services uh, this morning, which is looking at the Lord's Prayer. And the thing we're going to be looking at today and onwards is how it works as Jesus' model and teaching for us on how to pray. We're going to focus on today the first two lines, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And we're also therefore going to unpack as we go through this service a little bit about what it means for God to be our Father, which we think is appropriate as this is also Father's Day, and also what it means to honour his name. So with that in mind, we're going to start with an opening prayer and uh, please do join in with me. Father God, you promise that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are with us. Come. Spend time with us, your children, as we gather around your feet. Spread your love, share your insights, and show us where we need to change. For the glory of your name. Amen.
Attention everyone, please be quiet, for I am about to pray. You do realize that I am an expert in prayer, or, or should I say, in the art of prayer, because it is indeed an art. Not everyone knows how to pray, but I do. <sighs> God Almighty, victorious, gracious, and faithful. Here am I, once again, your humble servant, bringing my supplications before you today. Supplicating earnestly, honestly, with integrity and wisdom, deeply in awe of your inestimable worth. Grant your servant riches from your benevolent and restorative heart, omnipotent and omnipresent God. Amen. 
Jesus says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Oh, oh, oh dear. Lord, you know all about the situation I'm in. I simply cannot pay the gas bill. And that's because I had to lend Joey six pounds last week and he hasn't paid me back yet. And then it was my mother's birthday. I had to buy her a present, not just any old present, but the most amazing perfume that is a very favourite. And, and then, well, I had to take some wine to my friend. Well, actually, it was two bottles of wine for a party. Um, and, and then the, the dog got sick and um, the bill was enormous. Um, and then, then all sorts of things happened with the dog that I'm not going to go into. But it got expensive. Um, um, anyway, I haven't got enough money to pay the gas bill. Amen. Jesus says, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. They think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Well, you may wonder why I'm not praying. Don't need to. God knows everything about me. So why should I even bother? Amen. Jesus says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. It's 9.30. I mean, it's 10.30 a.m., Sunday morning, time to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, These people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Jesus says that there is a right and a wrong way to pray. Have you ever thought of that? We've just seen a piece of drama and it was talking about the right ways and the wrong ways to pray. And I wonder if you've ever thought about that, that there are good ways and not so good ways to pray. I wonder if we can remember what those things were. Well, some of the right ways to pray, there was the first thing was to do it secretly in a room, to find that place where you're comfortable and you're in a calming environment. I happen to be sat here in um, my living room and this is the place where I come first things in the morning to pray because it is a comfortable place it is a place where um, I've got in the habit of coming to it is a place which uh, has a pleasant outlook I'm just sat here near the window if, if I swing the camera around you can see that uh, I've got the uh, patio window there I can look out onto there and see the lovely garden and it's quite calming and relaxing for me. I also often have the, the dogs sat next to me and I've got three of them here with me and so you might find that one of them disturbs me in this talk but that's just something where um, I feel at home and comfortable. The second thing that uh, we heard in that piece of drama was to keep prayers simple and honest. Ask God honestly what you need. And the third good way to pray is to pray from the heart to use prayers which actually affect us, not prayers which are over general. I mean, sometimes uh, you hear prayers, God heal everybody in the world. Well, I'm not sure that God will do that. And I'm not sure also whether that really affects us because there's seven and a quarter billion people in the world. Yes, we'd like to have um, a world where everything is nice and good, 
but actually I think it's a too big a prayer to pray. And then there were the things which um, we, we heard about which were perhaps the wrong ways to pray. The first of those was to do it as a public show in front of everybody, to show how good we are. And this is something which Jesus was very hard on the Pharisees about because they did that a lot of the time. They, they made other people feel inferior. And we're not to do that. We're to do it quietly by ourselves uh, and, and to do it in a way that is, that is honouring to God, not picking up who we are. Also, uh, Jesus said that, or in that drama we heard that, it wasn't to be using babbling words and long prayers that, that sound impressive. It's to do with just our own personal prayers to God, our prayers for situations that we bring to God. And the third thing was to not speak in ways that doesn't involve who we are and our hearts and our emotions. Speak in a way that actually touches things that we're concerned about. That doesn't mean to say that we can't pray about things that we don't know much about, but things that actually have made an impact on us are going to be far more honest to God. Now I wonder whether we recognise any of those in our prayers, or in our struggle to pray perhaps. Do you ever get caught at that place where you think you ought to pray a certain thing just to impress other people? Or to make sure that other people know that uh, you really are a very good Christian. I wonder whether we do struggle to find a place where we can be quiet and alone with God. For that we've got to make decisions, we've got to make the time, we've got to find that place where we're not going to be disturbed. There was a film that I watched uh, fairly recently called The War Room and uh, the first one I saw the title I thought it was about um, uh, you know, governments and the war room where they go to plan how to be strategic about battles that they were facing. And it is in one sense, but it's actually nothing to do with governments. It's to do with a woman who goes to buy a house and the seller of the house has a room, which is a little box room, which she calls her war room, which is where she sits and prays. And all around the room, she had things which reminded her of the prayers that she was praying for. That was her place where she prayed. And the third thing that um, I wonder if we recognise is that um, we should be praying in a way that that's, um, is, is our prayers um, and do it quietly on our own. That doesn't mean to say we shouldn't be praying together because there are times when we pray together. But we need to make sure that we have that space where we can be quiet with God on our own. So we're building that relationship up with him. We're having that conversation with him, both speaking prayers to him and also listening to what he's saying to us. Do we need to be simple and honest before God with what is important to us and what's going on around us in our lives? Or do we think we need to use lots of fancy words? Do we need to come to him honestly with what's on our hearts? Or do we simply rattle off a few prayers and then that's it. We don't really finish and really th consider what the Buddha is we're talking to him about. One of the talks in Alpha is called How and Why Should I Pray? And in that uh, video that we watch when we do the Alpha course, there's a Roman Catholic priest uh, who, who says that there's three important things about our prayers. The first thing is, is, is that it should be honest. We should come honestly to God. The second thing is it should be simple. And the third thing, we should keep it going. So keep it honest, keep it simple, keep it going. And by those three things, he says that uh, when we come to God, if we're feeling frustrated or angry or joyful, if we're feeling as if the world is on top of us and we're feeling very depressed, then come to God in that attitude. Say, God, I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling as if everything is caving in on me and I can't find a way through. If we're feeling joyful, then say, God, it's so wonderful that these good things that you've done in my life, I'm feeling in a lovely place because he enjoys seeing our enjoyment just as much as he enjoys standing with us when we're feeling as if life is too, too, getting too much for us. So keep it honest. Start praying with where you are. Don't start from where you're not. The second thing is to keep it simple. 
keep your prayer specific and simple. It doesn't have to be lots and lots of words, but if you say, God, I need you to come to bring a change to this situation. I need you to come to bring your healing for my friend David or Michael or Sharon or whoever it is. And then keep it going. Don't just pray a simple one prayer and then forget about that prayer. If somebody asks you to pray for them, or if we're being asked to pray about a certain situation, I would suggest we write it down and actually come back to it on many other occasions until we find the answer that God has given to us. Keep it going, keep it simple, keep it honest. And if we're going to grow in our relationship with God, we need to learn the right and the wrong way to pray. The right way to pray will encourage that prayer relationship with God. The wrong way may encourage us to actually give up praying and actually not see answers to prayer. And when Jesus was on this earth, so you can hear my dog uh, just uh, rolling around on the floor, scratching her back there. His disciples, who were his closest friends, wanted to learn how to pray because they'd seen him praying. So one day when Jesus had finished praying one, praying, one of them said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And we're going to hear now, this is what he said. The reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In verse 9 of our reading, it tells us that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father in heaven. He didn't say, our policeman in heaven, looking down on us, waiting to punish us for wrongdoing. Jesus also didn't say, our puppeteer in heaven, who controls us and doesn't give us any free will. Jesus didn't pray our teddy bear in heaven. Something meaningless. Jesus didn't say, pray to a bearded old man, irrelevant and powerless, sitting above us on clouds. Jesus didn't pray our Father Christmas, expecting us to be given things. So, Jesus taught us to call God our Father, because the truth is we have a Heavenly Father who loves each one of us so much that he made it possible for us to be his children. So what sort of father is God? Is he loving or critical? Is he demanding or accepting? Is he trying to take all the fun out of life? Or is he good? The Bible shows us that Father God loves us, accepts us, treasures us, delights in us, and wants not only to be involved in our lives, but also for us to be involved in his. So, listen to the, the Bible verses coming up that have been put together in the form of a love letter. 
from our Heavenly Father to each one of us. Father's Love Letter My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You are not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I've been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you. Simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could. For I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand. For I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. Because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvellous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your father and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. For in Jesus my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you to tell you that I'm not counting your sins. Jesus died so you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. Nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I've always been father, I will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad.
heaven. We've thought a lot about this today and now we're going to move on to the next line of the prayer that Jesus taught his friends. Hallowed be your name or hallowed be thy name. Now just for a minute we're going to take a little peek behind the curtain of these newfangled online worship thingies that we've been offering these last few weeks. A secret. Um, they're not all our ideas shocking i know we take from resources from all over the place and we try to cobble together something that we hope will both bring glory to god and opportunities for worship for us and so the online plan that we were stealing from this week suggested that once we understand the concept the awesome concept of our father then we think about his name and we think about what it means for his name to be hallowed in such a way that we don't ever dishonour it. And then the plan went on to start talking about eggs and bunny rabbits being fragile and easily hurt. And I've pondered on this over the week and it took me back to this. This is the year one of our pet chickens decided to get broody. And so we took some fertilised eggs and we helped her incubate and hatch them out. And we've all, haven't we, seen a newborn chick? Is there anything in the world that appears more fragile? I mean, look at them. Tiny, cute and fluffy. This one was named Goldilocks by our then quite young girls. And she grew up to be a stunningly beautiful hen who laid the most beautifully fragile and delicious eggs. This one, however, very quickly developed characteristics that confirmed to us he wouldn't be laying us any eggs. We named him Jeremy. I forget why. Jeremy, from these very, very fragile beginnings, grew to be the kind of pet that required nerves of steel. To the point that we had to arm ourselves with a dustbin lid every time we wanted to enter the hen house. He came at us, talons in flight like this, ready to attack, ready to gouge out anything that got in his way. Right up to the point that my uncle took him in for us on his almost a small holding with lots of his chickens and hens. Um, my uncle said he was apparently delicious, but we won't dwell on that. So what's the point? of this. I guess it's that fragility is a dangerous idea, it's certainly a dangerous thing to assume. An appearance of fragility can often be really deceptive because often there's a core of steel underneath. If our Lord's name is to be hallowed, it is holy and mighty and majestic. It's to be feared to be respected and to be loved. It's to be handled with great care, yes. Not because of fragility, but because of its weight, its power and its glory. The idea of hallowed or hallows are very familiar to many of us through the Harry Potter series because the quest for the Hallows is kind of the culmination of the whole saga. The Deathly Hallows are an incredible, awe-inspiring, dangerous, powerful collection of objects. And if one person has all three, which are the Cloak of Invisibility, the Elder Wand and the Resurrection Stone, so if one person has all three of those, they become the master of death, and so becomes Harry Potter. So, hallowed be your name shouldn't be something that easily trips off the tongue. Because in saying hallowed, we are saying that this name 
is so incredible. Something to be spoken of reverently in fear and in love and in understanding that we are speaking of awe, of power, of majesty and of being the one true master. You might like to take a look at these images of God. The first one, the lion and the lamb, is a mix that when we actually stop to think about it, is truly awe-inspiring. If we can even begin to get our heads around the idea that these two creatures exist to be our God together, then wow, hallowed be your name. And then here is William Blake's famous painting of God. And this is certainly a God that is not to be messed with. And it will be a very brave soul who casually dismissed the name behind this power. But then there's this, Christ of St John on the cross, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be the name of the God who would do this for us, for the world he looks upon as he dies. Hallowed be the name of the God who truly does become master of death. And therefore, the whole of life. Hallowed be your name. So what does this mean? It certainly means that the name of God is not to be used casually. And it certainly means it's not to be used in any kind of disparaging way. But it means we take a step back from our relationship with our God. We accept him as our loving father, as we thought we've been thinking about today. But maybe the next line of the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be your name, is a reminder that we never ever forget that this isn't cosy. This is not fluffy. This is not cute. This is not to be taken for granted. This is a very raw and a very real power that we are committing to. And there can be something of an adrenaline rush in that when we stop and we think about it. A very raw, a very real power. Hallowed be your name. Wonderful counsellor, yes. Prince of peace, yes but always mighty God. Amen. We're going to turn now to a time of confession and prayer um, in which we are going to think about the things we've shared, that we've learnt, that we've heard during this service. And uh, our confession is focused around saying sorry to God for those things where maybe we haven't thought of him as father and listens to his words in the right way. So uh, there's going to be a number of responses as we go through each section of the confession and uh, please do join in with them as you see them on the screen. Let's pray. Father, we call to mind now those times when we have forgotten you are our father. Father, forgive us and bring us back into a living relationship with you. Father, we think on those times when we have failed to honour your name through our thoughts. Father, forgive us and set our minds to always hear the prompting of the Spirit. Father, we think on those times when we have failed to honour you through what we have said to others or when we have taken your name in vain. Father, forgive us and help us to respect you 
and speak your words to all those we meet. Father, we think on those times when we have failed to honour your name through our actions and inactions. Father, forgive us and help us to honour you by doing your will. Father, we thank you for forgiving us through your unconditional love and redeeming us through the sacrifice of your Son. Parent us now through life's journey, holding our hand and guiding us on our way. Amen.
Sophie, thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace and your goodness. Help us to be shining light to those around us so they can know your love and care for themselves. Father God, we pray for those situations that overwhelm us. Some are personal, some national and global. Give us compassion to be your hands and feet. Give us strength to love our neighbour. Give us wisdom to know what to do. God bless the fathers and all those who have been like a father to us. Guide them to good role models and, and loving to all their children. Give them your strength when they face uncertain times and fill them with your peace when they are anxious. Give them grace and patience to handle situations in a loving way. Help them to be a father like you are. Amen. We'll draw our prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let's summarise what we've heard this morning. Jesus says that there are right and wrong ways for us to pray. So let's learn from that and learn to do praying the right way. And God, then he wants to find a, a place for us to spend time with him alone. A time when we can be real with God. A time when we can share our thoughts, our feelings, our hurts, our, our joys, simply and honestly with God. And that's, there's a lot of difference between that and praying as we are in church. And also we found that we can have the privilege of calling God our Father, our Father, and what that really means. A wonderful, wonderful feeling. We are his children. And because of that, we have a special bond of love. And we also found that God wants us to handle his holy name with, with care. The name of Jesus, God and the Holy Spirit but uh, are not there to be used as derogatory terms, oaths when you hit your finger. Let's remember some of those thoughts today. I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises forevermore.
May you leave here knowing that the Lord who loves you delights to hear and answer your prayers. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Father's love letter. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You are not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb, brought you forth on the day you were born. I've been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvellous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I've carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your father, 
and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you. And to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. Nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I've always been father, I will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad.